Hey there, my name is Provis, and welcome to Patron. This is a game that I've had my eyes on for a while now. It is a colony manager very similar to Banished, which of course means I have to try it out because, as you all know, I am very much addicted to that genre, and you guys seem to enjoy it as well. This game has been in early access for a fair while now, but it's been receiving regular updates, and I think it's now at a point where it's getting enough content that I feel comfortable jumping into a new game and showing off what it has to offer, so let's do that now. I've already decided to name my town Gimliesburg in honor of my little corgi boy who is sitting in the room with me. And actually, he's been feeling kind of sick these last couple days. I had to take him to the animal hospital. So in honor of Gimli, we'll call it Gimliesburg. Can, of course, change your banner. There are a few options to go through, but I like the look of the sword. I think it's very noble. As far as the map, we have several to choose from, which do vary in soil fertility or richness and weather. There's also a normal and challenge difficulty, but you can adjust those settings ahead of time, so don't worry about that too, too much. I'm going to go ahead and move on to the Twin Islands. I think this map looks pretty cool, and they are fairly large, so there's plenty of room for me to grow. And then it's going to have a temperate weather, other options being cold, dry, or jungle. Now, as far as preset difficulties, normal difficulties should be just fine for me, at least for now, uh, until I've got a bit more experience with the game. The only thing I'm going to change here is the Demolish Refund. I'm going to set this to full, just in case I make some mistakes or I don't like the placement of something. I want to go ahead and get all my resources back and not feel like I've made a horrible mistake that I need to kick myself for. So, I think you'll forgive me for allowing this very small handicap. Let's go ahead and jump into the game and place down a town center to get started. So there are three things I think you need to be looking for when you're placing down your town center. One, you want to be somewhat close to water because that opens up fishing as well as trade. Two, you want some open space that you'll be able to grow into, but also plenty of trees, ideally, for gathering some early food and getting some lumber. And three, you want to be somewhat close to a mountain because you're going to need those in order to get any uh, coal or iron or stone. If you're not next to a mountain, then you're really handicapping yourself by a lot. So I would advise doing something like those three options there. So right over here, for example, is not actually that bad. It's pretty close to a mountain. It's got some water. There's trees in these areas, a fair bit of space to expand over here and a fair bit more over here. I kind of like the look of this. Let's go ahead and place down our town center just like so. And Gimliesburg has now been established. All right. We're going to go ahead and pause the game because there are a few things that we now want to queue up. First off, here's all of our little people. You can see right here the population demographics. We have 10 adults, 6 young people, and 3 small children. That comes to a total of 5 families. And just like in Banished, families do stick to each other in the same houses, at least until a man and a woman come of age, and then start their own family unit, at which point you're going to need more houses. So that family number right there should be your cue that you're going to need to build 5 homes early on. As far as resources, the most important in the early game are going to be coins, which is necessary for upkeep on some buildings, as well as just constructing them and a lot of other things. Coins is very important, but probably the biggest bottleneck in this game. It takes a while to tax your people. You also need plenty of food, and you're going to need some lumber and firewood in order to build more uh, structures and survive the winter. Other resources include the tools, stone, iron, coal, herbs, medicine, clay, and bricks. Then also some special luxury resources. I have no idea how you get these yet, and they're for different classes of citizens, but we'll come back to a lot of that later, I do believe. All right, first things first. Let's go ahead and place down some housing. You can see that we could build a tent, or we could go ahead and build some houses. Does cost me some coins, lumber, and stone, but I'm okay with that. We'll place it somewhat close to our... Uh, town center. How about, let's say, one here and one here. I'm going to leave a little space between them because I do like the idea of placing some hedges between them for some beautification, and that does make people happy. And then maybe another house right over here. Alright, so that's five houses. We'll also go ahead and... Uh, gosh dang it, I got a pop-up from Steam. Cannon, why are you playing Peraspora? Now I can't see my menus! Very unfortunate. Okay, there we go. Roads. Let's go ahead and play some of these. Now, one thing I would love to see in this game at some point is a very, very faint ghost grid anytime I'm placing down literally anything, whether that be a house or a road or anything like that. We could go to view and toggle on the grid, but for obvious reasons, it's a little bit garish, and I don't want to leave it like that for too long, so not... not really going to stay in this map mode for a long time, but I would like for it to just kind of pop up automatically. Just something very, very gentle 
on the eyes. Other map modes we can look at include soil fertility, and there's the ore all around this area, and so on. Unfortunately, we're going to have to toggle through all of them. Every time that I want to place something and I need the grid, click, 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 there we go. So be prepared to cycle through those quite often. All right, so now we have our houses. We can come back to other necessities later, but for now, let's consider placing down some basic production buildings. We want to get a gatherer's shelter. This is one of the most important early game structures you can get because it does produce a pretty hefty amount of food. Ideally, you want this to be surrounded by a bunch of trees, so shoot for about 100% work efficiency if you can. Something like this wouldn't be half bad. Up over here would be really quite good too. Um, I think I am going to actually set it up, like, up over here. I think that's not too far away from the main base. It should work all right. Sure. Let's go ahead and place you like so. Now, there are other structures that I want to cluster around in, and I'll explain more of my reasoning for that later. But those would include such things as a hunter's lodge, a forester's hut, which I will move right over here, and also an herbalist hut, which is a very large structure, but right over here should be fine. Uh, unless we want to place it over this. Nah, we'll do something like this. This will be fine. All right, so we'll go ahead and place you right here. And then lastly, a depot. A depot is going to function as your storage location. It's where you drop off resources and also pick them up to deliver elsewhere. So it increases our storage capacity. It reduces the travel time. I think it's just generally going to be a good thing to have a depot over there. Once again, I want to go ahead and place some roads. And I have to swap over to the grid pattern, which, you know, is, again, just a little annoying. But it's all right. It's all right. It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. It's fine. Let's go ahead place the roads like so and ba-boom okay so I don't want to actually build all of these right now I don't have enough resources to do all of that the most important things are the gatherer structure and uh, the forester's hut everything else I can put on pause for at least a little while but let's go ahead and prioritize these make them the most important thing that we can do we also want to chop down some trees because I need to get some wood this area seems nice let's go ahead and chop a lot of that stuff down and I think we can finally unpause the game. You can increase the speed, and I think you really should, because the number one complaint that I have seen for this game is that it does play a little bit slowly. So, yeah, 10 times speed is kind of going to be our friend. I don't know if those are a fair complaints or not, but just be safe. We'll just leave this on at all times. If the game feels like it's dragging a lot, we can always just, you know, end the series early, but I'd really rather not do that for obvious reasons. Now, there are a few other things we're going to need to look at. So we can take a look, for example, at the jobs board. This is going to be important for us once we do have these structures completed. We'll have to have people assigned as gatherers or foresters. And there's a lot of different uh, jobs that people can work here. So similar to Banished, but just larger. Like, there's a lot of production. I mean, good lord, you may have noticed there are a ton of production buildings. Lots and lots to play with over here. So that's going to be exciting for us. And then in order to unlock a lot of this stuff, you're going to have to do some research. This is the research tab right here, and you can see that there's a pretty hefty tech tree that you can work through. Each research taking some coins as well as different resources in order to unlock something. Let's go ahead and place, for example, a fisherman's hut. I'll spend 25 gold and 20 lumber to start researching this. It will take seven days, which aligns with time that is currently passing up over here. So it does take time to get research, but it doesn't usually take that long, at least until you get to, like really far down the tree. Some of these are going to be new structures you can place. Others are going to be policies you can pass in order to improve your nation in some way. Others are just general technology increases. For example, herbalist huts get more efficiency if they're near a gatherer's shelter. Or a hunter's lodge is more efficient if it's near an herbalist. And this, by the way, is why I deliberately clustered certain buildings together, because I knew early on we'd get some extra productivity if we did that. Hey, these buildings are done. Let's go ahead and assign a couple of people as gatherers and as foresters. We'll start with some of that. Seems good. All right, people have their houses, so that's all looking solid. Let's go ahead and now turn on the depot so that people can drop off the resources that they gather. And we've already gathered a pretty good amount of lumber. I want to get some more stone and stuff. Let's go ahead and gather up stone. Now, it's a little hard to see stone, so I just kind of just drag wherever I can find some. Usually close to mountains is going to have a fair bit. And just going to grab some iron off in that direction, and there's a fair bit over here as well. We're just eyeballing that. I've never played this map before, so I don't actually know what I'm looking for. I just kind of guessed, and it turns out I was right. Another thing we want to place down is going to be a sawmill. Sawmill, very important, because it's going to turn that lumber into firewood. Not the highest of priorities right now. I'd rather my workers gather up basic resources and get these depots going, but you get the idea. Let's go ahead and start researching the quarry next. The quarry, of course, is going to be placed next to a mountain, and it's going to be a consistent source of stone, as long as we do have people working in those jobs. Don't need it right now, but we're going to want it fairly early on. 
I'm going to go ahead and turn on the Hunter's Lodge next, so we'll be able to get some more sources of food. And you can see here, by the way, if you hover over different types of resources, it gives you a rough idea as to how much you produced last season and how much you consumed. 475 is obviously not accurate, I just started the game, so I don't know how much food I'm really producing right now, but I'm pretty sure it's not 155, so we need to go ahead and start working on that. Let's go ahead and assign a new hunter who is going to be gathering up some more food for us, and we'll see how things look as we get to the next month. I produced 36. Yeah, nowhere close to how much I'm going to need. That, that right there, that is the concern. Yes, that is exactly my fear. Now, we can improve some of these buildings in order to get a bit more value out of them. It usually costs you some coins and some other resource. For example, at the Hunter's Lodge, we could spend some coins and tools to improve my venison production specifically, or leather. We can do both, and we probably will. Leather, I can see being very useful, but we'll see. Production during winter, increase the number of worker slots, etc. I'm going to go ahead and go for large baskets and just get an extra 25% efficiency at the gatherer's shelter. And I'm actually tempted to do this again for another 50%. So let's do that. We're now up to 149% efficiency, which should only get better as we continue to plant down more trees. That's going to be a pretty massive amount of food, and we could spend some more gold to expand this, but I'm not going to worry about it quite yet. Not quite yet. Instead, I'm going to go to spend my gold getting some insulation in these houses, reducing the amount of firewood that they are going to be needing. I don't think I have enough gold for all of these. We can do at least a handful. I want to sustain my firewood as much as possible because I'm not building this out, like, right away, and I don't want to consume all of my lumber early on. So the more I can reduce this, generally speaking, the better. Then we're going to have to wait until the next month in order to produce some more of these coins. Coins really are a huge bottleneck in this game, unfortunately, but it does seem to tax people every, like, week or two. Something like that. So, uh, the more houses we have, the more family units we have paying taxes, just generally speaking, the better our economy. We are, at some point, going to want to place down a dock, which has a very hefty coin upkeep, but if we are producing enough of a resource that we can sell it, back to our founding country that started this colony, we'll be able to get a fair bit of extra coinage. So this is more of a medium-term goal. Like, not, not right away, but fairly early on. Resources are missing. What are you missing? You need more iron and lumber. Yeah, you don't have enough of either of those yet, but that's probably going to be fine. I mean, in this stock, we're looking pretty good over here. We should be dropping off a lot of resources. How are we doing as far as jobs? We can have an extra carrier? Sure, why not? We'll go ahead and do some of that. You can, at some point, by the way, upgrade your townhouse, and that requires getting further down some of the technology. Let's go ahead and research the mine, by the way. Yeah, the Gatherer Hall is the first one, but once uh, built up, that unlocks a lot of different structures. For example, we can't even have crops until we have got the Gatherer's Hall. So you need to be making some progress down technology if you want to get access to some of these really good structures kind of early on, especially things like farming. I mean, I, I, in these kind of games... You know, consistent food from farming is usually so stinking important. I can't imagine that's any different here. Let's go ahead and turn on the sawmill, drop off some tools and some lumber, start producing firewood so I don't run out of it. Because, of course, I do not want to upset my citizens. I want them to be happy. This is happiness right over here. And you can see there are a lot of categories. Health, safety, immigration, loyalty, religion, education, basic goods, luxury goods, taxes... And housing. Meet as many needs as possible, and people have a better birth rate. If they get upset, then they will leave. You can see that there are other columns here, though, which represent different classes for your citizens. There are uh, peasants, laborers, uh, mercantile, I think, merchants, yeah, and the gentry. I assume each one have different needs, and I assume that they produce more taxes the higher up you can get, but... Not positive on all that. Let's go ahead and assign a person to work in the sawmill, start producing some of that firewood. Of course, there is going to be a fair bit of upkeep. If we wanted to spend a lot of gold, we could reduce that upkeep just to make things a bit more efficient, which, as a general rule, I think is a good idea. Like, we've learned from past games, the more efficiency you have, just the better. Like, always, the better. Let's go ahead and start building out this herbalist hut. Not that I really think we need it early on, but I'd like to go ahead and have the option. We'll start getting cleared path which is going to increase the value of said herbalist hut once this thing is built and has someone working there. But that will open up the technology to make things like my hunting lodge a bit more efficient as well. And that's just more food. More food is good. We are, in fact, now producing more food than we consume. That's a good sign. We're producing more lumber than we consume. That is also a good sign. How about uh, firewood? No idea yet, but that's because we only just recently constructed this. Tools, I don't think you actually use per citizen. I could be wrong on that. I feel like it's mostly for things like building new structures and upgrades, but maybe people consume these. I just have not experienced that 
as of yet. All right, well, now we just kind of sit back and wait for a little bit while we wait for more coins and stuff. I suppose we could try getting some extra food if we wanted to go for a fisherman's hut. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Um, let's go ahead and place one right over here. Uh, I can place it like this. Yeah, that'll work. Let's go ahead and place one of them fisherman hut. Boom. And uh, allow people to go ahead and start getting another food source. Not a lot of space to build with over here, though. That's a little unfortunate. We could start meeting some people's needs if we go to town buildings over here and start constructing a few other things, such as a well and a shrine and a watchtower and stuff. You know? Watchtowers make people feel secure because guards are going to prevent any crime. Uh, we'll go ahead and place this, so I don't necessarily want to build it right now. We can also get stuff like this shrine I was talking about. How about one right over here? And I don't have enough resources to be placing down a well, but we'll do that in a little bit as well if we have the coins. Yeah, just little things to increase happiness. It's not absolutely crucial in the early game, but I mean, it's nice to build them if you can. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do it, if you know what I mean. It's fine. And let's go ahead and build out a few more roads like this, because I just like to have this stuff planned out for a little bit of my urban stuff, and blah, 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 blah. There we go. Okay. All of this looks pretty good. The good thing about these roads is they place automatically and they're free, right? Which, in and of itself, is leaps and beyond what some games will do, where you have to sit around and wait for people to make these, and it's really annoying. Oh, you get the idea. Anyway, there we go. All right, so that's all going to get taken care of. Perfect. Let's turn off the grid. Turn back on the trees because I want to see what I'm doing, and there we go. Okay. Is everything making sense so far? You can't you can't respond. I can't hear you, but you can tell me in the comment section, and maybe in a week I'll know if you guys are confused horribly or anything like that. Is there any more iron nearby? Uh, that's stone. I don't see... Oh, okay. It is now October. Looks like it's getting cold. I do see some iron over here. Um, getting resources far away is not always advisable because your workers do have to travel a very long distance to gather anything, and that's just kind of meh. Don't really want to do that, but I mean, oh well. well. We'll see what happens with that. So, yeah, they're not building up the shrine, like, any time at all. I feel like the builders are pretty slow at their dang jobs. It's really frustrating, but... Whatever, we'll make that a top construction priority. How are we doing as far as producing food? It says we're producing about a thousand per year. The efficiency has gone up because we have been planting down new trees. We really want this to be a giant forested area if possible, hence why we have this forester's hut. We could spend some resources to speed up the growth of the trees, and I think I will because the faster the trees grow, the more resources we have to chop down, but also the more value we get out of the gatherer's shelter. What about the herbalists? Looks like we are producing a pretty good amount of herbs. I don't think herbs are really important in the early game, but it's not a bad idea to have them, and they're also a really good trade good to sell back home if you can, so that's an option for us. Production during winter, blah blah blah, meh, I'm not gonna worry about that too much. Where are my workers and why aren't they doing anything? Gosh dang it, you know what, forget this. Forget clearing all this stuff out, you guys are too slow, you're taking way too long, we're not gonna worry about it, we'll just place down a mine later, alright? We'll place down a mine. Toolsmith, don't really need it right now. Let's go ahead and get ourselves tracking prey, so our hunting lodge is going to be a bit more efficient. Of course, everything's pretty terrible during the winter, but... Oh well, I mean, just it is what it is for right now. How are we doing on that food? It's starting to consume a fair bit more, but that's because our production's gone down. We should start uh, using up a lot of firewood now. And we're still producing a pretty good amount of our lumber. The insulation is going to help out a lot on these structures. We don't need to have as much firewood consumed. That's going to let us really start building out a fair bit. Uh, do I want to get more large baskets? Uh, not, not really, if I'm being completely honest. I don't, I don't think we need to be doing that right now. I think we'll end up being producing plenty of food during the summer, at least until our population grows. Now, one thing that's also fairly slow in this game, at least in my experience, is the uh, population growth is a little on the slow side. I mean, that's probably very intentional, so you don't hit a death spiral too early on, but it also really slows down your ability to get more money and start opening up new production chains. Immigration waves are going to be an option at some point in the game, but maybe not right away. Not right, right, right away. Uh, let's see, we can start placing down some of the mines and stuff. Do we need coal? Do we want iron? I've got a reasonable amount of iron. How much are we using? Four per month? That's not a lot. Yeah, we could place down a coal mine first if we wanted to and start getting some coal. I don't think that's a bad idea. So let's go ahead and plan on that. Now, ultimately, I want to have my iron mine, my coal mine, and a quarry all close to each other. That's going to be important because you get some extra stacking bonuses if they are close to each other. So, yeah. Let's, uh, let's plan on that. How about having a quarry up over here? I don't like how space inefficient this is, if I'm honest. 
It doesn't matter if these are like up against the mountain. They just have to be kind of like in range to get 100% efficiency. But I mean, I want them to be kind of close. How about we do something like this with the coal mine to start. Followed by a quarry. Rotate it around to be something like this. And I cannot place down another building right now. We can pause this. We'll get the iron mine, uh, sorry, the coal mine up and a run. And there's a shrine, by the way. This is the next high priority, but no one's working on the fisherman's hut for some reason because apparently people don't like fish. Oh, that's fine. I understand. I don't like fish that much either, but that is what happens when you grow in a dang desert. Um, all right, now we can place down an iron mine. Just get this all, you know, planned out. I just want to know exactly where everything is going to go. Something like this will be fine. We will, of course, need to have a depot so we can drop off a lot of our resources, but this should be all right for the moment. Okay, not feeling too bad about this. We do have some more children. Okay, I don't actually know in this game if children grow at an accelerated rate, which is to say, like, people reaching adulthood in, like, three years in-game time in order to speed things up. Not sure. I guess we're gonna find out. Probably. There is, I think, supposed to be a way to, like, look at your individual citizens. Um, yeah, residents down over here. You can click on all of these guys and find out, like, who their, ver their uh, spouses are, whether they're happy, what they do, blah, blah, blah. But it doesn't really seem to matter all that much. Like, we don't really have to... We don't really have to pay attention to individual people, just more like in a just general sense. We can, however, see our growth and get a sense of how much we have grown. Apparently, the peasant class grew by 11. I don't think I believe that, uh, but okay. No, 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 that's saying how many adults we have in the class. Oh, 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 never mind. That has nothing to do with how many children we had. Okay, population, though, is 23. We'll see how this grows over the course of years. I really don't know for sure how we're going to create new uh, classes of people. I assume it has to do with meeting certain needs and getting certain goods and it happens automatically. Maybe it has to do with upgrading houses. I don't know. We're going to find out. But you can see that uh, having different people, uh, different classes does produce different levels of income. Apparently laborers being the most advantageous. That's interesting. Well, okay then. Uh, we don't actually want to build out the iron mine, though. The coal mine's the next thing to work on, so let's start working on that. The fisherman's hut is going to be fine. We could get some sturdy nets. Not going to worry about that. I'd rather start saving up some money and research other things, such as um, construction goods. Let's go ahead and research this. We'll start getting our first decree. So decrees are something you can do at the town hall over here, and they function like special policies, government policies. They have a cost... Uh, in terms of gold per year, so they can be expensive, so you really want them to pay for themselves in some way or another. But also they cost you something called influence, and influence is a resource you start getting automatically as you upgrade your town hall, which means it's somewhat technologically based. So you can't just have like eight decrees in the early game, you really need to have like one or two, and then as you grow you'll be able to get three, four, five, etc, etc. Do we want to increase our construction goods by 10%? I say, sure, why not? We'll go ahead and pass this. So I get an achievement for that. That's going to cost me a bit of gold per month in order to run that, unfortunately. But it should be nice in the sense that it's going to improve the production from our quarries, coal mines, iron mines, foresters, toolsmiths, and brickworks. Right now, we're only going to get value out of the forester. So arguably not good right now. But as we get things like the coal mine and stuff, it'll end up being eventually good, right? Probably. Let's go ahead and assign somebody to the mines. Not enough workers. Do you need two? I assume you don't. We could reduce the upkeep over here, by the way, which reduces how much gold we have to spend on this, as well as the lumber, uh, which isn't a bad idea. I mean, the earlier you pay for this, obviously, the more it pays for itself, so I'm okay with that. We are saving ourselves 15 gold per year. It'll take, like, six or seven years for that to pay for itself, but that's fine. That's probably fine. I'm in this for the long haul. I am optimistic. I believe that our colony is going to survive for more than a year or two. We have a housing shortage. Why? Because apparently some adults have paired off and created a new family. You can see that we have six families, which means we need six houses. So let's go over here and get a house and we will place one over here. Uh, how did I do this again? Oh, right, I did something like this. So I left some space between them so I could have a row of hedges. All right, fine, fair enough. Let's go ahead and do that. Mm, place down some roads, place down some roads. There we go, okay. We'll place down this over here. Could do some beautification. Fences are a fairly cheap option for that, but I wouldn't mind getting some hedges. We'd have to research that. It's very cheap. Why not? We'll just go ahead and do that. It gets a little bit of extra happiness and stuff, I think. I mean, it says that people are happy if you make neighborhoods look prettier. It doesn't say that, like, attractiveness is a metric, but I think it just... Uh, I don't know. It, it has to do something. They, they say that it do something. They're not going to lie to me, are they? I don't know. Maybe they will. 
Uh, we don't have a lot of labor. Oh, now we actually have more laborers to work with. Some people are of age now. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn on the watchtower. I would like to go ahead and start improving some security. Not that safety is much of a concern, but we'll just go ahead and get this built. Whether I work it, different question. This would require some insulation as well, just to reduce the amount of firewood we have over here. Uh, how do I feel like I'm doing on things like iron and stone? Pretty darn good. Not a lot to worry about over here. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and expand out the gatherer shelter and assign an extra worker over here so we can produce some more food. And then maybe even go for more large baskets. That's a little expensive, though. Maybe there's something else we could be doing. How are we doing on food? We are barely producing enough. Barely. Um, we'll do it. We'll do... Uh, what do we want to do here? I mean... Uh, da, 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 da. Hunting? Maybe more hunting? That could be kind of good. Production during winter. More venison. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, I feel like the gatherer is easily the best way to go. Look at that. That's so much. You know what? We're going to go ahead and do large baskets. That's 75% more production for three workers, which brings us up to a whopping 1,800 per year with almost 200% efficiency. So, like, we should produce a freaking ton of food. Now, unlike games like Banished, where I think you could actually see the food and stuff over here on the ground, I don't think that's how that works in Patron, right? Because otherwise, like, I don't care how efficient, efficient they are. They're like, nothing grows fast enough. We pick it before it's uh, finished growing, right? I don't think that's how it works. I think that just generally, as long as there are trees around, you're going to be improving your food production one way or another. So this just, like, is good. This is just good. So we'll start producing a fair bit of extra food. Though as our population continues to grow, like, we got to keep an eye on that. It's very easy to death spiral in games like this. Very easy indeed. Uh, so Sawmill is doing fine on things like firewood. I mean, we should be using up a fair bit of coal for heating instead. I don't know at what point you just want to say, forget the sawmill. I mean, maybe we're kind of getting to that point. I don't know. We are apparently are not producing enough lumber. I'm going to go ahead and expand this for an extra person and also expand out some... Oops, hello. Expand out the uh, production. Our king overseas has sent his regards and some stone. Thank you, king. Yeah, you're going to get events like that once in a while. That's going to be fun. Um, the events can be good, like we just saw. And sometimes they are going to be things like, hey, we need to bribe the clergy and give them a bunch of our stone or something like that. And it makes all peasants and laborers happy, but it makes the gentry unhappy. Those kinds of things. So you're going to end up having some decisions to make. I don't know how important they are at the end of the day. They're just things that you could do. Um, I wouldn't mind getting something like ice fishing before we get into the next round of winter, but we can wait on that a little bit. I could get a small park. I don't see that being very important. I think a toolsmith might make a fair bit of sense. Get this sucker unlocked, and we will start working toward things like producing some clothes. Right? That could be good. Carpentry, so we can get some furniture. These are luxury goods that I think will help people level up eventually. Maybe. Haven't tried that. But also start working toward that gathering hall and such. I don't know. All these things seem really important. The little things. Increase present ha general happiness in the clothes shop radius. Ah, see, that's important because that tells me that I'm going to want to have a clothing shop kind of close to where I plan on having my urban center. Like maybe over here or something. That might make a bit of sense, so we'll consider doing that. I'm going to go ahead and chop down a few more of these trees. I think they're encroaching on my territory and I don't trust them. Trees are nefarious. They sneak right up on you. Their, their roots dig deep, and they destroy your foundations. Trees are truly the slowest moving, most insidious creatures. I don't know. I'm just trying to make commentary. Don't judge me. It just is what it is. Hey, we could start beautifying with some hedges if we wanted to. I mean, I don't know if it matters, but I mean, it costs the same as a fence, and it looks nicer. So let's go ahead and place down a, a, little, a little hedge. Oh, wow, that costs 60 gold. Yeah, I'm now questioning whether that is worth it. Um, probably not. <laughs> if I'm... If I'm completely honest, um, hmm, right. Well, okay, how about we also place down, no, I don't need a flag post. Beautifying, I don't know. It's not obvious to me what the gain is. It just, it just looks nice. The good thing about hedges is they build out pretty fast, so this is going to be a thing. Is happiness going to go up? Or basic goods, or anything along those lines? Is it going to go up? Probably not. Maybe? Health? Safety? It can't, I mean, what is a hedge going to do? A hedge does nothing. I have no idea. Whatever. It's fine. It looks good. And people have a little bit of privacy, which in my experience, people tend to like. Um, I could assign someone on the guard duty, but like, I don't think we need safety right now. I built this mostly just like out of preparation. 
So I'd rather have a worker free to go ahead and do other things. I think that will be a little bit better for me. All right, well, you know, we're now in the middle of year two. I think we've got all of the basics taken care of. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. But there is obviously a lot more that we are going to need to do in the near-ish future. So, of course, be sure to stick around. Hit that like button if you like what you see. Leave comments if you played this game before. There's something you'd like me to try out. Subscribe for my future content. And I will see you guys next time. Thank <laughs> you.